Chapter 44 to Mary White, Battle Creek, Michigan, July 15, 1889. Dear Daughter Mary, I have just read your letter sent to Willie, and I would say in regard to a horse or carriage, follow your best judgment. I sent you as a present the $100 for you to use as you need in anything, either a horse or carriage. Just make it as pleasant for you as possible. In regard to Laura, I am sure she will never consent to live with Walter Harper. She is no more favorable than she has been and will do anything but this. She is a strong girl, but when it comes to tact in furnishing little dishes that is palatable, I fear she has not the experience in the line of cooking. I know Walter Harper's anxiety, and he hangs to this matter like a dog to a bone. But I have done and said all I shall ever do or say on this subject to Laura Harper. I leave her to settle with her God in regard to this matter. I have thought of one, that is Annie Rasmussen. I do not know as you are prepossessed in her favor, but I know of no one who can prepare nice appetizing little dishes as she can. And as the principal thing now is to get something for you to relish, perhaps Annie might do as well as anyone. I have some fears in regard to Laura Harper that Walter Harper will be intruding himself and that the burden of the matter will somehow affect you. You must not be troubled with anything of this kind. If Walter Harper would keep himself away, then I would feel that Laura would do first rate, for she is strong and intelligent and would impart vitality rather than rob you of it, unless her own troubles will so torture her brain so she cannot keep her troubles to herself. If you could give her some knowledge how to cook, I do not know, but she is the most skillful cook, but I would not suppose this being a farmer's daughter. Her parents would feel a wonderful relief if she could be with you, for she has had such a strain upon her she has become almost desperate. I really pity her, but if Walter Harper wants her to go to Colorado, that he can hope to win her, he will be disappointed, I am quite sure. When I proposed her coming with you, I did not suppose that Walter Harper would be still persistent in his claims and bother her, and then that would bother you. I wish she could come and do what she can for you in the homekeeping line, for the girl needs the very influence you could give her, and it might be to the saving of her soul. But if this does not work, then there is Annie. In all her ways she may not be as attractive as some, but she loves and fears God, and she can get you up nice dishes, and Reba and she could agree well. I do not feel that it is best to hurry the children to Colorado, if they can be well cared for in California and are doing well. I have no prospect of renting my house at present in Heldsburg. I think my debt must be canceled at the health retreat by the renting of my house there for $20 per month. I think we will know better what course to take when we go to California. We have picked up furniture here piece by piece and got them together so that we are presentable now. We have three bushels of fruit, black and red raspberries. Put up 75 quarts of sour cherries, 25 quarts of strawberries and currants, grapes, tomatoes yet to come. We will be prepared for our winter campaign here and expect to spend the winter here. We find work to do all the time in the same line we have been at. I had a long good talk last Sabbath with Elder Smith, read many articles to him, and I think his mind will be enlightened. I then, yesterday morning, had a long session in my good pleasant room with Elders Kilgore, Olson, Underwood, Farnsworth, and Dan Jones. I read to them for three hours letters written to Elder Butler by me, and letters that he had written to me, and articles written by me while in Minneapolis, and read to the general conference there assembled. I had read these all to Captain Eldridge, and the voice of Captain Eldridge in all the committee was these articles should be put in print, just as they are, for the delegates of the conference to have in their hands. Then there can be from this material for another testimony, number 34, which I must get out. I see so much before me. I feel almost dizzy in contemplating it, but the Lord will give strength and grace for me to do all that there needs to be done. Our prayers are daily ascending to God for strength and divine wisdom, that I may move in the order of God, walk in the clear light, and make no false steps. 
I find that there is nothing like coming close to persons and seeking to help them by individual effort, but it is not always an easy, pleasant task. But this seems to be my work, which I cannot get rid of. We pray for you daily, and the Lord does hear our prayers and answers them. We need the intelligence you have in our work, and we shall make our request to God for your life, your health to be restored, that you can engage with us in the work. But all you are required to do now is to be happy, cheerful, hopeful in God, and comfortable. We want that you shall have every convenience. Many prayers are sent up to heaven for you, and we do not forget Elder Olson in our prayers. I have been so weak and debilitated since attending the four camp meetings that I have been unable to do much but to hang my helpless soul upon Jesus Christ. I have hope in God. I trust in God. My heart goes out after God. I shall see of his salvation. If I walk in the line of duty, I shall be sustained. I must say goodbye. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Mother.